rush hour people walking this way and it, it felt like they were like, you know the day of the Triffids, you know, like they weren't really human, you know, like they were, there was a hidden something or other which we didn't know about. Um, and we were walking against the flow. One in six people in Britain are experiencing mental health problems. You could be one of them. I've, I've had experiences when I felt that, you know, the, there's a war going on in the royal family and the, the, the message is being communicated to me f through the television or radio on, on how I should help the Queen with her, her war with Prince Charles. More and more I start to think, what if, what if I'm not really an, an office junior? What if I'm a, an apprentice spy? And, uh, and I started to look for special messages for me. Schizophrenia is not something I have or got. It's not something you catch. It's something I am. The mad have taken to the streets with their Kiss It campaign. Their emblem is an inverted heart to represent a bottom where drugs have been injected. They're protesting against a system which they say abuses their human rights. Honest doctor, can't you see what those drugs have done to me? Psyche drugs, they make me sick. Doctor, put away your prick. What are we doing? Many of these people have experienced being detained against their will and forcibly drugged. Some have had compulsory electric shock treatment. They've had enough. What do we want? Huh? What do we get? Huh? What do we want? Huh? What do we get? Huh? But instead of hugs, not drugs, they might get a dose of tough new legislation. They feel they're in danger of being criminalized. We follow four of them who are campaigning for a change in how the mad are treated. They're trying to change the perception that we, instead of the takers, which is what we're perceived as, we're these poor little ha, oh, and everybody has to do everything for these poor people, and also mental health is very unsexy. That's the current cliched word. Sarah was in and out of psychiatric institutions for eight years. Adopting the chemical in the brain responsible for causing euphoria, she has changed her name to serotonin. The, 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 the whole, the whole um, history of us, of us is, I mean, is um, that the, we, we start to think we're contaminate, contaminated and we think that we're rotting, we smell the rotting. And then we think, it just goes on, and then we think we've got maggots then there's no escape from yourself because you're stuck with yourself and you're all the time thinking that but there's no escape from yourself. And then you're wanting to get rid of the maggots, get rid of the you can't eat them. It gets, um, just becomes the most scariest thing. And all the time you can smell the rotting. So what have your diagnosis been? Well, we've had a diagnosis of manic depression, schizophrenia, current one, a psychotic depression, and obsessive compulsive disorder. So, um, yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll see, you know, if there's any others to come, it'd be quite interesting to add to the list. Sarah's constant companion is her dog, Jem. When Sarah says we, she means both of them. Jem, you happy? Jemmy? Jemmy, Jem, you happy? No, sit. You happy? Very happy. Yeah? Are you happy? And are you mad? Are you quite bonkers? You're nuts? Yeah? Really nuts? Really nuts? Yeah? Cool. Jemmy, um, well, we go everywhere together. Jem is part of Sarah, and Sarah's part of Jem. We're kind of <laughs> connected, you see? very strong connection. And as we say to some people that we, we sometimes think that at some point we might fuse, it'd be quite interesting actually, a six-legged 
Last night I was well out of it. I've been touching about. I was unwell. Good night, though. It was a good night, yeah, but I was unwell. <laughs> In 1991, after graduating from university in Kenya, Amos O'Mary first experienced mental illness. He was 23. When he moved to London, his symptoms returned. I had hallucinations, both auditory, uh, s smell, sight, and hearing voices. How I was admitted, I can't really remember at the moment, but uh, it was a short admission. It wasn't explained to me that uh, if I ran out of medication before the appointment, I should go to my GP to get, to get more medication because there was no care program appro approach at the time. And so when I did have an episode after f finishing my, my, my medication, I, w out of frustration, smashed uh, wired, wired windows in my house and uh, lacerated my tendons to the bone. This led to a, a longer admission. And th but this is when it was explained to me that I had manic depression, bipolar affective disorder. Amos's condition means that he's susceptible to severe mood swings, from extreme happiness to deep depression. His symptoms tend to recur every two years. I was 19 when I experienced my first altered state of consciousness, a spiritual crisis. And I remember the specific point at which that shift took place. I was working in Tooting Broadway as a chef, and I was in the staff room, and I stood up and announced, it's all wrong. The head chef inquired, what's all wrong? And I, I, I replied, the world. And at that point, a flood of tears fell from my eyes, and I collected my wage packet and left the heat and humidity of the kitchen and my career as a, career as a chef behind and um, embarked upon an altogether very different way of life. And walked back home en route, taking out 10 pound notes from the wage packet and releasing them into the summer breeze. And I watched them flutter through the streets of London like paper butterflies. Having reached my home, I received my first auditory transmission, um, a, a voice, an angelic voice that communicated the words, everything is going to be all right. And um, I walked onto the common, and the voice also instructed me to pluck from an oak tree a single acorn, which I charged in my hand, and um, then ate swallowed whole. And um, so metaphorically, or literally, I'd eaten from the tree of knowledge. Concerned about him, Aidan's parents took him to see a GP. He was sectioned under the Mental Health Act, which meant that he was immediately admitted to a psychiatric hospital and detained and medicated against his will. I woke up on the ward of a psychiatric institution. I uh, woke up naked on the ward of a psychiatric institution. My clothes had been confiscated. I walked through the corridor of the psychiatric institution um, and found an office. I was naked as I was walking. Um, uh, I undoubtedly, in retrospect, that would more than probably be recorded as a symptom. I found in an office a psychiatrist and said, where am I? He said, you're in a psychiatric institution. I said, if this is a, a he said to me, it's a voluntary institution. Um, 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 but I said, if this is a voluntary psychiatric institution, so I'm volunteering out. He told me, he said, if that's before, before we deem that acceptable, I'd have to go before a panel of clinicians to deem whether or not I was to be released or not. But it was put to me, um, what would you do if we were to release you? I said I would join the Labour Party and fight the National Front. It was at that point a diagnosis of paranoid schizophrenia was imposed upon me. Schizophrenia describes a set of symptoms which include hallucinations, delusions, and bizarre thoughts. 
over 120,000 people in Britain are diagnosed schizophrenic. The symptoms are twice as common in men as in women. Rufus May was 18 when he became mentally disturbed. Gradually, I started to enter more and more a kind of fantasy world that was more exciting than my real world, which seemed quite depressing. I was getting more and more agitated by some of my ideas that I was under surveillance, for example. Um, I started to get pains in my chest and I wondered if these pains were caused by a gadget uh, that had been inserted into my chest and that it could be used as a means of controlling me by enemy forces. If, if I started to be too challenging, they could turn the frequency up and give me pain and ultimately terminate me if they wanted to. His parents took Rufus to see a doctor who referred him to a specialist but instead of the chest consultant he was expecting, Rufus was taken to see a psychiatrist at Hackney Hospital and sectioned. When I arrived here, it seemed like a scene out of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Um, I felt like Jack Nicholson. And just the way the staff were very sort of distant and austere and the way the patients, a lot of them were really disabled. Um, with big tremors and um, dead looking eyes and I thought it must be a place for burnt out spies or another test so I, I set about trying to communicate with people. It wasn't for quite a while I started to think maybe maybe it's not a place for burnt out spies because people don't seem to be recuperating you know. I guess when I wasn't compliant and I didn't take the medication they wanted to me to take. Um, I was pinned down by several nurses and had my trousers pulled down and I'd be given an injection into one of my buttocks. I remember the first time this happening, thinking, what's happening? You know, I'm feeling fresh air where you're not supposed to feel fresh air, you know. <laughs> and it was, it was quite disturbing. Um, and you're kind of being penetrated with a substance you don't want in your body. So it, it, it's quite a disturbing, overwhelming experience. Um, that happened to me quite a few times and uh, it's something I never want to happen again. Over the last 40 years, there's been a shift away from treating psychiatric patients in hospitals to care in the community. More now live at home than ever before. I'm about to take my medication, uh, which I take all at one go. Uh, three mood stabilizers and uh, one antipsychotic drug. And do you get any side effects from your medication? Well, of late, I have noticed I'm putting on weight, so, which is uh, considered to be a side effect. Um, and uh, I think also my libido is, has been affected, but uh, I, I think the, when, when I did go to the, see uh, somebody about it, I wasn't really convinced about the treatment, so I was only prescribed Viagra. There, there is evidence that uh, the life expectancy of people with mental health problems who are on medication is, is, is reduced. Um, this may be due to high blood pressure, uh, heart attacks and stuff like that, so it, it, it appears that the uh, importance of checking up on my, men, my medical health and uh, stuff with my GP has, has lied with me and not my uh, CPN or social worker. I take these um, drugs on my own terms. I regard them as psychic toning down agents. They close the aperture, the psychic aperture, or at least reduce it, 
And I, because I take them minimally, psychic or paranormal stimuli can come filtering through, but I'm not overloaded. It's not like a downburst uh, anymore. So I use them to, to, I see it more in the realms of alchemy rather than uh, pharmacy. On and off, I was on medication for a year. I kept trying to come off it um, because it, I didn't like being on it. Um, and twice that meant I ended up coming back into hospital. And partly that was because of the withdrawal effects. I got quite high as soon as I came off it. I didn't get the proper help to come off it in a gradual, sensible way. I had to do it under my own steam. On his third attempt, Rufus succeeded. I'm not saying that people should never be given medication. What I'm saying is that that should just be part of the package of treatment. If you give it on its own, it's abusive. And if you think that's the thing that's going to cure someone, and, and if it doesn't, you just keep upping the dose. That's very abusive. What, what you need is to combine that with other approaches, talking therapies, activities. Well, then they'll really rehabilitate, they'll really have a chance to recover. But if you just rely solely on medication, you're just going to damage someone. I have tried not taking it. Medicate the medication, and it's 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 always ended up with us becoming very ill. So we have tried, but it, it, it and to be honest, we don't want to suffer. Thank you. You know, I think we've had enough of it. We don't want to, so so we take it. Mental health problems can also make it difficult to sustain relationships. I live alone. Uh, I think my illness has 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 has, has made me suffer in terms of uh, you know r relationships with a partner. Uh, I've lost two partners who I re regret you know losing because of my ill, Ill health. The stress for partners is made worse by the fact that psychotic episodes often occur without warning. Trisha has been with Aidan for eight years. Thank you. Although I should expect and what's either side, I don't, I kind of, I can miss them, or I certainly have the, the two times it's happened. Um, and then it's, oh my God, here we go, you know, so, um, and then there's a tremendous energy, so he's got a tremendous energy, so that can be quite draining. I'm never, afraid and some some bits of it are kind of very sweet actually some kind of emotional side which can be very sweet but it's more that when it, when sometimes he gets very cut off and that's when I find it very difficult because there's a sense of grief and like um, will he come back really people do tend to stay isolated I mean too many of us too many of us are single as well which is terribly sad too many of us including myself are terrified of sex because of various whatever's and um, means that you're then very alone. How many people are single? <coughs> that's most people in the room. Most people. I think that's really sad. Hard to believe, I know. It's sad. <laughs> Sarah is a member of Creative Roots, a South London-based art cooperative. It's one of only a few in Britain, which is entirely run by and for the mad. Creative Roots is a um, performance company um, where we engage with drama, drumming, poetry, music, dancing, even creative cooking right here at the moment. I just feel safer here than in other rooms. Mm. Because you've got friends. You know you've because got friends. Because they're fellow uh, service users. People, you know, have been through all sorts of things. Yeah. Mm. Just mm. understand where the other person's coming yeah. from. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. If you go away and come back, you're welcomed you know, with open arms. You're not kind of basically looked at like, oh, what are you doing back here then? <laughs> it's like, oh, you're back. You're back Lloyd, or you're back Raz, you know? Or you're back Charlie, you know, whoever. You know, there's no stushness about returning. What's stush Coldness, <laughs> coldness about returning after you've been away for a while. 
25 years ago, creative roots would have been unthinkable. People diagnosed with severe schizophrenia or acute depression were likely to be confined to hospital for long periods of time. Not in, not in all cases, but in a lot of cases, what is the mental health disability? But, but saying we cannot fit in with your society. Mm. We cannot really, in the way you wish us to engage with it, we cannot, mm. basically. We, we just can't deal with it, it gets to our heads. Mm. It drives us crazy. They want to prove that the mad can play a positive role in society. As part of an awareness-raising exercise, Creative Roots perform at various places in the local community. The whole reason behind it is to bring our, our amazing creativity out there to the public because it's very hard to get the public to come in to see what we do. So we're bringing it to them. Rufus lives with his partner and two children in Yorkshire. He hasn't had a schizophrenic episode for 18 years. I guess it's the life I dreamed of having. I thought I could magically walk into some safe house and find. Uh, but yeah, it's the life I feared I'd lost as well in the end. Um, I mean, I'd, until Gregory was born or conceived, um, I wasn't sure if I'd be able to have children because I thought the medication, because it was so strong, I wondered if it would actually stop me from uh, being able to have children because it had made me impotent, so I wondered if it had a lasting effect. Rufus's experiences have made him want to change the way mental illness is treated. Hi, I'm here to do the recovery group. Thanks. I started to get this idea, what if I could come back into the system and turn it <laughs> like a wooden horse, get back into the system and, and challenge it from within, you know, prove the whole system wrong and come back in a role as a psychologist, like an undercover spy, really. <laughs> and, and how could I then shape the system from within? Rufus qualified as a psychologist 10 years ago. Once a week, he leads sessions with psychiatric patients and staff. We've got a um, recovery meeting today. And um, we're looking at hope. Uh, hope and love were the subjects suggested from last week. And um, we tolerate different points of view, different understandings of the world. There's no one best way to understand the world. The reason I came to Bradford is that it's famous across the country for having a progressive approach to mental health. And I run a recovery group here in the hospital and it's very popular with service users. They're allowed to say what they want and it's, it, as far as I know, it's the only one in the country. I've always been very positive and optimistic by nature apart from the odd exception of trying to kill myself, but nobody's perfect. But I think, having spent three months on an acute admission war, that was extremely difficult, because uh, it was only about four years ago that it happened, and it's very difficult to come to terms with finding yourself in a very strange and frightening place. Where I was at the time, the staff never talked to anybody, and we had an activity room that was continually locked and nobody actually went in it. As a result of which, we had lots of violence. We had the police in every day, we had the riot squad in occasionally. But I find now, sort of four years down the line, that things are a lot better.
Aiden sees madness as a means of accessing a reality beyond the reach of the sane. He describes himself as a reality tester. Butterflies have interacted in, 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 with me throughout my life. Um, uh, this is indicative of the psychic reality of schizophrenia, as I perceive it. Um, I received an auditory transmission um, that said to me, you will tr receive true enlightenment when a butterfly lands on your head. But no um, butterfly did land on my head. It wasn't until two years later that um, I was in the bathroom at the early hours of the morning and um, uh, I saw a peacock butterfly on, 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 the, on the bathroom wall um, and uh, took it and released it into the early hours of the morning to greet the dawn. It flew up into the fresh air, did a spiral and came down and landed securely on my head. And all I can say is if enlightenment was joy, I was at that point a truly enlightened man. Over the past 25 years, Aidan has tried to share his inner world with the rest of society. He's done it through art. This is uh, an image called One in a Hundred, which um, is a photographic representation of the real thing um, in which I incorporate a butterfly and uh, 99 Rorschach, psych psych Rorschach psychological inkblot tests. Um, and it represents, uh, well, one person in every hundred is diagnosed schizophrenic. That's 1% of the population of the planet. Um, and um, I represented the one with the butterfly, um, which is the embodiment of exquisite sensitivity, vulnerability, and fragility. Um, and the other remaining 99, I've represented not altogether seriously as Rorschach psychological ink blot tests. The word psyche means butterfly. Um, in the Oxford English Dictionary, the word psyche is defined as um, butterfly. Um, so it's particularly pertinent and poignant to use a butterfly as a symbol or emblem for the um, psychotic. Again, the butterfly motif. A butterfly pierced with a syringe and labelled with the word paranoid schizophrenia. Um, this is about clinically induced paranoia. It's um, about forced drugging. One can ask the question, is the, are the drugs being inserted into the butterfly um, so in, um, injected into, or, or is the life being drawn out of the butterfly? The mad have always been viewed with a mixture of fear and fascination. Before modern medication became available, they could be locked away for life. In Victorian times, the public could pay a penny to view inmates in the lunatic asylums. The times have changed but still there is stigma towards people with mental health problems. And in my own experience, having had a, a manic episode, I was barred from three pubs and one co coffee shop. So far, I've managed to go back to two of the pubs, but I can't be asked about the last one. So why did they bar you? What happened? Well, it, I w it was odd behavior. At the time, I was paranoid, so I, was, I would be looking around myself and perhaps they, were, they thought that I was aggressive. When I'm, when I'm uh, having a, uh, is it an episode or, or when I'm getting manic, right? I can start, I can finish a whole bottle of Jack Daniels, five pints of lager and I'm still stone sober. As in, uh, no staggering, no nothing. You find like, I, I know that when I was first diagnosed with a, with a, a problem, you're given a drug, like I think it was a or which actually affected my, my uh, walking capability. I was paralyzed from the waist down. I could not move my legs. And I'm thinking like, what's happening now? You know, you've given me a medication. I'm supposed to be for something else. Now I can't walk. I, I was paralyzed. The issue is, is that there's still a lot of research that needs to be done. 
and like this idea of like the way the drug companies because you know mental health is very good for drug companies very good for them it's good business because a psychiatrist is the drug dealer <laughs> right he prescribes it but do you're stuck on it you're stuck on it for life yeah but do you believe those drugs sometimes they cause more harm than yeah, good yeah yeah like Charles, Charles has been having high blood pressure.